Greetings family, Bomani Tamba here and welcome to our Black Star Pan-African Community public meeting to invite uh, those of us that are not members to join up uh, with us uh, to get access to residency, citizenship and to live in a black power community. I'm not sure who is on screen sharing or not or who is using their video or their phone. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the presentation that was sent, which is the newsletter that's titled Move to Ghana Conference Call July 25th. So for those who logged in on their computer or from the app, uh, you'll be able to see my screen. And for those who just called in, uh, you won't be able to see anything, but you can just view what I'm talking about from the newsletter. Um, some things won't be the newsletter, but most of it will be. So the newsletter, it's uh, very uh, long, but what I've done is compile information from when we first started in September of 2019, 22 months ago. When you're looking at the newsletter, you'll see a picture, and this is uh, right there in, in the town of Jahadzi, and that's where the actual community land is. And Jahadzi is literally a few minutes away from Winneba. And for those, so I'm trying to put into perspective for those who are not uh, familiar with Ghana, the two main areas of Ghana that you have is Accra and Cape Coast. So Winneba and Jahadzi is about an hour and a half to two hours away from both places. So it's not exactly in the middle, but it's close enough in the middle to just let you see it on the map. And it's also uh, beach access. So we were literally about uh, a little over two miles away from the beach. Uh, so just want to let you know we're in that direction and not inland. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to find a good way to just link a GPS direction. You know, right now the issue is some of the mapping in Ghana you know, throws you off when you actually use your GPS. Um, so one thing I did have, and I don't know if I put it on this newsletter, uh, was a GPS link uh, which kind of pinpoints you in the location of where the community is. What you see is our consultant, Kwab Nabaka, is our, also our tour guide, and he's functioning as our consultant on this uh, project. And that's someone I've known uh, since 2007. Uh, so he's my go-to person, and you know, person I literally consult with about everything that we're dealing with. And also he, he helps me translate as far as um, information I need to send to him to explain it to the chief. Sometimes you know, the natural language of just fanti or tree is what's easier to explain to two parties. Definitely someone that uh, you know we need on the ground and just letting you know everyone that we're rolling with, to let you know that we have a team of people to handle certain things and I'll go to all the people. The next person is not the current surveyor, uh, but that's the last time I was able to take a picture with all five of us. Uh, myself in the middle, uh, Chief Nana AT on the right, and then Attorney Richard Lapo to the other right. So I have it in text on the uh, newsletter. Uh, so the big uh, connection that we all had was explain to all of them that we literally have too much issues with us leaving from America, coming to Ghana and getting land and developing it and you know contributing to society and building that's something where we, we as a people can all share and, and, and build from. Uh, and it, it definitely has been a an issue, uh, but what I've learned is, you know, you have to really just be there for a while and understand the game and kind of build a system that works and build things with people of honor. So after about a month of this connecting and and everything, we was able to get a nice uh, deal arranged uh, for the for 15 acres of land. So what you have to do after that is you have to literally just do land survey, which is a scope of the land itself. Then you have to do um, land search. So all those things are processed through the Lands Commission. Uh, I was able to get everything clear and able to get a, a signed and stamped land survey, which did take a few months. 
uh, like most of these things, it does take a few months. And so, so basically, family, after this, making sure that legal pay, paperwork was in place and having a memorandum of understanding with the chief and working to pay them the, the money itself, working on the land, was able to get now get our lease itself uh, with our board members and their entire staff and crew as far as uh, the chief itself. So if we put together all of the legal paperwork is what I'm coming at you with. And in, the, in front of the screen right now, this is our business and corporation. So all those documents and things I mentioned to you, we can get you copies of it, anyone ever just need us to send them an email with anything like that. But most of these things are either on the newsletter, on the website, and, and things like that. But nevertheless, those are the things that you want to verify with anyone before you start going to Africa and getting land and making deals with people and things like that. And, and everything that we have done is, is recorded from the beginning, from the interview with the attorney, at Kwabna, all of us being there and just uh, speaking and being right there all together and it's explaining what our commitment to, to the African diaspora as far as making sure that we have a community we can build with and local people or native people of that area where we can connect with and have a good, strong relationship where we're all working together in the same efforts and energy. That way when you're there building your house, you don't have issues and we, we, we're not running into something where, where we're going to have problems because maybe the culture is, is too strong this way and we're looking to do something else. So all those things are honestly just worked out and that's what you have to do before you proceed to start building and things like that. And then you have to just work with a group of people for a period of time to make sure that you can actually work with that group of people to, to get things done. So and everything has been a work in progress, but things have gotten better and better and more organized. And it's the natural flow of how you build in a business relationship, especially when you're representing a whole group of people. So the main thing I want to say, because I've seen a lot of videos on YouTube, people mentioning that, you know, and at any moment things can always go wrong for people, but the main thing is to do your research, do your legwork, put things in place before you start making all these final decisions. And that's what we have, we have done. And then get your best people involved. I mean, I'm not talking about just somebody you just know for a few days or somebody you just feel like they're, they're cool and they're a nice person. Someone that you have invested relationship with to where they understand that if they destroy messes up for you, they mess up other things. You know, you have to kind of bond people together where we all have so much together and working with it with, with a project to where it makes us more efficient. And maybe that's the natural order of things. Uh, but I'm basing everything based on you know, being there in Ghana, uh, going back and forth on 19 journeys, and 19 journeys from 2006 to now, and actually going there knowing nothing about Ghana, and actually just spending my time there staying back after the, the tours. And yes, I've done tours to country that, countries I've never been to and things like that, because I heavily believe in research and organization. So whatever things you don't possess, you just reach out to people, tour guides, uh, consultants, attorneys. You just find the right people to help you, you know, you know to, along that path. So I spend that time learning everything I learned about land and working with different people as the assistants, bringing groups of people to them and helping them in certain administrative way. To now, uh, you know, literally this. Less than two years ago, we just decided that the best thing for us to do is to just put our, our energy together since we have all of the right elements and not try to find another group of people who have land and then they have all of these restrictions and rules and all the things that, you know, they're not, and then things that they're not telling you and being clear with. So it's another thing I'm explaining to everyone. Everything that we're sharing with you is up front, all the details, all the videos, the pictures, all of the, the connections and you have questions and you had to, here to just let people know the clarity about everything that we're building a unique community and it's off the grid and, and things like that. So definitely just uh, letting everyone know that take your time, read through everything, process everything. There's no need to rush any decision. And then whenever you're dealing with anyone else, you know, literally just process the same thing. And that's all I've been honestly telling people from we started doing business because I noticed that people are making bad decisions. You know, I have people who travel with me and I'm there with my staff, my crew, and somehow they find people that they don't know 
to get land deals with. I would never understand it. But nevertheless, you know, once those things happen, you know, we can't really help you because you got yourself caught up into certain things. So you may have to just let it go and move forward. Uh, so this is just something that we're sharing. And since it's a public call, just have it accessible on YouTube to where anyone can, you know, process and listen to what we're, we're saying and where we're coming from. So those are all of our legal documents in place. And we do have a 57 acres land survey that's um, waiting to get final signature on as we have to just make some adjustment to the dimension of the land. And also the, the fire, we have to just also adjust and get a new land search. So I'm waiting for both of those to come back and on the next conference call I'll be able to share that with everyone. Uh, with everything that I'm looking to talk to more so is getting you connected to understand that the first 15 acres of land that we paid for, that is zero plots remaining. Anyone want to fill out an application and, and, and submit the rest of the details which I'll go through, I can put them on a standby list for phase one. But beyond that, what I'm looking to do is share more of what we're dealing with in phase two. As shown in that, it's going to say conference called topics, but before the topics is, is loaded, what it shows you is the documentation, uh, video, uh, and picture links um, for all the documentation. So the website link, when you click on it, it's going to load and give you over 10 different articles. And those 10 different articles represent uh, what we have as a community overview and it's broken up. It's broken up into details to give you an explanation, give you certain connections of who is welcome into the community and, and so on. So I'm going to just uh, go through the actual titles. And remember, I mentioned it's a lot of information, so I don't want to get caught into reading a lot of the things that we have. So the first title is uh, Introduction to Black Star, Repatriation, and Pan-African Community. Uh, so that's, and it, sh it shows one of our group pitches, and it's just us just letting people know how we came together with our ideas and ways to build a community. Site map, land survey, GPS location. And so once you click on that link, the same thing too, you'll be able to see the 15 acre site map. And I'm trying to make some adjustment to get the 57 acres on there or get it adjusted. And then we have the GPS uh, link also uh, where you can just click on it and it'll pinpoint you the location of the actual uh, land so you can just see it on a big map. Uh, Lands Commission search uh, for Black Star Pan African Community. So that is just literally just a search explaining that the portion of the land that we have is clear. Prime objectives, going into this basic concept of our vision itself. Business opportunities, uh, which is once we're building a community, we're building a community as a business community from the business center to the commercial part of the property to the farming part and so on. It's all in the mindset of business enterprising, uh, whether it's import, export, uh, just general trade, providing people services. Um, everything has to be about business. That way we can completely just keep funding our community and keep expanding and building. And then you know, maybe we can do some investment in the beach itself. Um, you know, there's always opportunities. Um, and you know, I spoke to the chief about it. So. But you know, it's like trying to do one or two things um, or one thing at a time versus just trying to just tackle all of this. But the beach is there for investment. Um, you know, I can see sooner or later, you know, we start coming up with ideas with other people in the entire town as far as shops. You know, building it like a nice little beach town, villas, entertainment places um, from volleyball. You know, you can just kind of take some of the example of this other cities I've been to, and like Rio de Janeiro or Dakar, and you know, right down the coast where just driving to, and you just see, you know, people, family out, and just enjoying, you know, enjoying the beach and everything. And you can just make it to where our investment in it will give it more accessible to the native and local people in the area versus making it some rich, expensive beach town where, you know, where the average person just can't enjoy it. But that's what I've been seeing going on all over the world or even other parts of Ghana that I've been and you know, it's more like oh this is for tourism and foreigners and things like that 
So trying to just build something uh, more organic and more just about us as a people uh, and not about and open things up uh, to where the children from the orphanage and the children in the town they have access to this unique front of the, the community that we're building, uh, which is the business center and also the community center, uh, which will take some work to structure and layout and also put budget together and put all of the actual drawings and things like that together. So uh, we're always doing a whole bunch of research and work and anyone at any point see where they can jump in, I would say just jump on in because having to do the other thing doesn't always work. But for those who are motivated to just work on things and they don't have to be you know, micromanaging things like that and they don't have to be pressured or anything, just jump on in. Um, everything I'm doing, no one is making me do it. I'm doing it for the greater good of my family, your family, our children, the future generation and children of the town, building something for us as a people you know, by investing our resources over a period of time versus just being here and letting us go back to the system. Many wonderful business opportunities, there's endless. Uh, even the chief uh, explained to me that he has 100 acres on the other side of Jahadzi, uh, which, is, which makes it a perfect uh, industrial area. So for people who want to move their companies and, you know, and so on, uh, those are opportunities. So everything I mentioned is fresh because we're in the central region. The Great Accra region is completely just overgrown as far as development and this is too much situation with lack of lodging or lack of housing and things like that and this traffic is too much. So building more of a self-sufficient town give you access to doing everything within the town and less stress having to go other places and you know the diplomatic connection that we have when we need certain things done, we just get it sent over uh, to our our partners at the Minister of the Future Office, dear in Accra, and you know whether they have you know full scope of attorneys and so on that can assist us doing many things you know whether it's things that's within the membership or things that we have to pay to get done. So I got a lot of great ideas as far as just how we can just enjoy a peaceful, wonderful time in Africa without the stress and without all the pressure because everything I'm working on and organizing with us or everything that we're working on and putting together is just based on my experience and other people's experience. I've gotten a lot of feedback from people who have stayed there, lived there in Ghana and also in, for the most part what I see is a lot of people going and then I see some people coming back. I um, don't want to say a lot of people coming back but I do see people coming back and I see the frustration because you know, when you have to give up what you have to give up to move and things like that, the last thing you're doing is to move back where you came back from and have to start back over. So having this organized completely allows everyone to just make a move to where you're settled and you have all of the help, all of the right things in place to make yourself comfortable. All right, membership rules and code of conduct. Uh, so those are things that we just definitely want everyone to actually just look to, read to, and be clear on it because uh, it's one of those things where enough of us have lived in uh, certain places of where we are in the world and, you know, you know, sometimes we don't know who we live around with and who is about what and everything. And you're just trying to just make sure everybody is connected, number one, and make sure everybody respects each other and make sure everybody does follow a certain flow of energy so we can live righteous. So everything that's on that link is about dealing and being righteous. A membership application, uh, what I really want you to do is just to email me and then I'll email you the getting started uh, email which has a Word document and a PDF membership application. Pictures and videos of the community. Now once you click on that, that's your public uh, Facebook and public YouTube uh, video playlist and that just shows you a full scope of highlights. And everything that we're dealing with goes back to uh, September 2019 and also goes back to the three times that we went to Ghana and documented information, uh, which was December 2019, December 2020, and May 2021, and also did an interview with the chief uh, in June 2021. So those things are on there. And also, uh, the citizenship video and the business conference videos are also there because we have people that are builders, shippers, and other people that we have in our network. I try to get as much people to come 
you know, that way when you're watching any of these videos, you just you see the array of people that we have that we're connected to. And these are people that we can keep accountable, and these are people that's in our network. So when people come and they don't use the people that we have that we can hold accountable and we have a you know, partnership with and use other people, it's like digging your own grave, and it's like a debt wish and things like that. And there's nothing that, you know, once again, we can uh, do for you. And, you know, at least consult with us. Um, you know, to me, it don't make no sense. I would never do that to any group of people that I roll with, especially if they're respectful and nice to me, and they seem and they're about their business, and they've delivered on everything that we first agree on. Uh, so, but these are true stories. I'm not calling anyone out, but... It's the most interesting thing, one of the most interesting things I've seen there dealing with us trying to move to Ghana or even people who say, hey, I, w I don't want to be around no, you know, basically no African diaspora, diaspora. They just want to go there and say they just want to be around the local people. That's fine. I'm around majority of Ghanaians the whole time I'm there. Uh, so, But I would like to at least network with some of the people from the diaspora and connect with us. Uh, it made no sense that we live in this struggle together in America and other parts of the diaspora. And then when we go to Africa, we act like we're too good for each other and whatever. A lot of times, those of us that keep in touch and connect is that each other's saving grace. And everything you're going to always see me flow with is strength in numbers, rolling deep, networking, being diplomatic, and things like that. Those are your life savers to make all these things work. Uh, so when I see people with videos on YouTube, it's like, you know, you know thank you for sharing, but you know, you have to take a whole lot of accountability for what you just went through because you do have access to resources and people and also you know you can also do your research and then you know if you also think about some of the decisions before you make them you know you'll be in good hands because don't do something in Ghana that you're not gonna do here and even though business is different you know it's like you're in Ghana you would normally not give people large sums of money that you don't know, that you have no connection with, that you don't, there's no accountability for. So that's, you know, so if someone does think about that, they'll just not do that. But nevertheless, uh, I do my best to keep myself available because I'm always open to connect to, before any of us go down the wrong road, I'm like to just say, hey, this is what we have, you know, we have going on and this is how we can look out for you and making sure you're good. And if you, you know, if you need that kind of connection to help, you can just reach out. No charge, no cost to call and talk and connect. You know, a lot of times I'm trying to meet people anyway because we should be able to connect and talk to each other. You know, because you never know how, you know, we may be able to connect and do some things together because, you know, it's like us versus the rest of the world. You can just kind of look at it like that. And uh, right now we're getting defeated. You know, if you look at all them things, and that's, even based on my last analysis of just being in Senegal, the Gambia, Tanzania, and also Ghana, that you know within the last uh, year, I see the Arabs, I see the Indians, the Chinese, different uh, Asian groups, and I see this others this enterprising. And you know, while we do certain basic things, I'm saying that we're basically not putting our, our resources together to enterprise fully, and. And these are the things that I talk about as far as the, the, the town having the industrial area and things like that. Uh, it gives us the land that we need to be able to compete and do wonderful things. And that's why uh, the partnership that we have built with all the people I mentioned at the beginning is it, going to just take us to that level. Other than that, it's hard to see yourself getting out of this, especially if you're an American, you plan not to leave America. You know, the system was just designed for what it is, to suck every single energy out of you over a period of time. All right, and uh, scrolling down, the next one we have is committees. Now, the committees are this, um, we still have to reorganize the committees. Committees, um, it's 10 of them, and they're all, and I'll read through them uh, in a few when I go down the newsletters. It's designed for us to just organize ourselves in 10 groups and kind of figure everything out based on doing scientific research and then us coming together and implementing what needs to be implemented and getting it done. It sounds very nice and easy, but, uh, you know, but we have to also just work in that direction. So a lot of things that we're working on, it may not necessarily be what we have to do right now, but we're putting the things in place that way. Once we even start getting there more settled in Ghana, uh, we have things organized to where we're just, things are consistently getting worked on and getting done. 
uh, bylaws, uh, which is one of the sign-offs, and the other sign-off is actually the community overview, which is all of these files together with the exception of the bylaws and the committees. The bylaws, uh, this showing everyone that this is a HOA. Actually, proper title that we have uh, for that uh, is our bylaws and homeowners affairs. Uh, so this is uh, not your typical this, uh, setup, but we put it in that direction to just make it a nice corporate uh, organized system. Uh, but it goes just beyond that because you know what we're doing is corporate economics. Um, and what we're doing is you know, you know, living off the grid, you know, straight up um, living in a more a world of ecology, planting uh, uh, fruit trees all over the place and things like that. Uh, we're putting ourselves together as a unique community. So there's one, there's different aspects of many things put together, and it's not ex exactly communal living, but it is communal living to a point because different people volunteering to work, whether it's a farm area or whether it's the business uh, center, the the uh, community center or so on. And these are things that we all just will get together and talk about. And and but at the same time, you're putting this together to let everyone know the foundation of what it is. Uh, we can only do so much at this very moment. But all of this is just to get people clear about uh, what we're dealing with. All right, so the last thing that was actually on um, the uh, website page, uh, which is uh, family, once you go to africaforafricans.org, you click on Black Star Repatriation Pan-African Community from the main menu, and that will give you all of those uh, articles that I mentioned that goes to the details. And the last one is getting started, land costs, requirements, refund policy, and I have a direct email for uh, that one right there. That way we just have it on email with the other things that's important, which is actually an attached files. So what you see right here in the uh, on the website link is the same we have that I can send via email. All right, so the email, I'm just going to scroll all the way down to where it says uh, important attachments because all of the files are attached. Uh, so one, sample membership application in PDF. Two, national criminal record sample search in PDF. And also in Reddit it said you can use this example or find another one to do your uh, background check. Membership application in PDF and Word. American passport info and signature or your passport info and signature. So it shows a scanned copy as an example and it explains right there need to be scanned and look like example. Passport style photo. So it doesn't need to have a profile photo of you. Need to be scanned and look like image. Six, full Black Star Pan-African Community Overview. That's all of the files that I was going through. Uh, it's a mandatory sign and read. I want to make sure that everybody is clear about what they're getting involved with, and we just, in order to confirm, we just need you to sign off on it. Uh, so it goes through li literally all those things, with the exception of the bylaws and the committees. At seven, uh, bylaws, uh, so same thing, uh, mandatory uh, read and sign. A committee, committee uh, description importance. So that's just uh, giving a breakdown of the committees itself. And I'm going to just go through that in a few ones. So let's read the last thing here. Uh, nine, 15 acre site map layout of the 50 plots uh, phase one. So that's a, a JPEG slash PDF that we can just see the first 50 plots and just get an idea of the scope of it. Uh, phase two uh, expansion was 57 acres. So that is a uh, it's a PDF and a JPEG layout. And if you just expand onto it, it will show you plot 51 to 181. Uh, so that's 130 uh, plots available. We have about 10 people on the list for plots of phase two. So that still leave a lot more plots. Uh, we haven't begun to start assigning plots. So I'm still looking to modify this drawing. But um, I like how we have half of that big 57 acres set for our residential, and then we have a nice connection of this, you know, what we have set up for um, uh, our commercial uh, district and things like that, which 
uh, and to just give it one title, which uh, to just give you access to you have 30 plus plots for farming. So a few other open space where you can plant trees, you can do certain things. Um, education center, space for apartments for those who want to come together and build some apartments. That way, if someone looking to leave from here and they need temporary stay, they can use one of those apartments to temporarily stay in. You can also just have some extra um, income. Another business center and also community center, maintenance building, medical center, community store, and additional space for other people to put up their business um, buildings and things like that. So just starting everything based on this a layout, based on what the survey, um, 57 acres is, and then just going from, starting from here and then working on literally just modifying it to where it flows almost perfect. So this is probably the third uh, draft um, and I just basically just took my uh, I took my ruler and a pencil and just crafted it up and then uh, just uh, scanned it and sent it to our surveyor uh, so he can use his digital system to create what we have. And so this is as close, um, you know, close to, you know, it's, it's close enough, but uh, within the next, um, I would say, six to nine months, if enough of us uh, invest in the plots, I'll just get the chief to let us clear 10 to 15 acres so those who are ready to build can start building and then we get all your uh, legal uh, paperwork and the legal paperwork will, will have your name on it your plot number and then a scope of your land it will be signed and stamped by the uh, lands commission and everything that I'm telling you about is being signed and stamped everything is legal serious court documents uh, because one Garvey Town uh, company told me that they basically told me that they couldn't get us certain things and we had to deal with their their own paperwork, which makes no sense because these things have to be stamped by government departments that they're authentic and then this is real. That way you can use it to, you know, if you need to bring this paperwork down to the bank to open an account, uh, you can do that. Then we give you your, your sign, uh, deed of assignment, uh, which give you the, you know, the written scope and details of your land and the agreement. Uh, with us as a community, Black Star Pan African community, and the chief himself, give you giving us access to the land and it's uh, your land. So that's another thing that I have is this uh, deed of assignment, uh, and it's long. It's uh, five pages, but um, this is what I mean when I say that we have all of the legal stuff in place to get to you. That way, you you can just be clear about your business. Anyone you're dealing with does not explain and go through all of these things and tell you all these things and you ask questions and you act like they're not clear or confused, you know, you may want to process it some more. Uh, so we're laying out everything on here, that way everyone is clear. So that was a whole lot of uh, documents uh, uh, right there. And let me uh, switch back to the new letter. So the news that I'm going to run down the 10 committees, as I've been saying, um, I'm going to share with everyone. And in the past, we've read through this in detail. So I'm, again, I'm just giving overviews of everything so I can go through as much information as possible. But definitely, family, take time to read through all of this. And I'm available to go through it with you as far as questions. But you know, we need, we'll need you to go through everything first before we can answer certain questions, because everything that we can think of that needs to be clear, we put in the details. And then certain things, you know, that may not need, may not be clear. And I'm definitely fine with uh, talking with you about it. All right. So one, business and professional affairs. Two, safety, security, and surveillance. Three, education, cultural, and social affairs. Four, sustainable energy and utilities. Five, medical and wellness center. Six, planning and development. Seven, uh, maintenance and landscaping. Eight, waste management and recycling. Nine, agriculture and livestock. And 10, bylaws and homeowners affair. So that will be the kind of function and operation that we'll have there on the land uh, where we are participating in making sure that we are having a community that's growing and developing as we need it to. And this is just, we want everyone to commit, but 
the same time, we have we do understand some people may have a may may be more flexible to do more commitment than other things. But we want everyone to at least just generally participate in something. And if all of us, you know, then contribute, then we can grow fast. We can be self-sufficient. We can do all those things. You know, it's, so it's, you know, with us, it's always all hands on deck. Even though everyone is not going to always show up. But but you know but we need enough of us to just keep things going. All right, so family, those are the links that's right in the newsletter. Uh, the documents on the website. Then you go down and you see the Facebook group link. So once you click on that, you can just send a request, and then uh, we'll approve it. And that um, page is a public page. And once I have videos, information, pictures. Um, and all the pictures in general are stored there as far as um, the pictures that we take on the land. So that's loaded with uh, details. And when new conference calls are coming up or anything like that, those things are shared. And then the playlist for um, our videos from 2019, uh, September to you know, the last month um, that was in Ghana, it starts right from the most recent videos, show you. As a matter of fact, just go there to the YouTube uh, link. It shows you our last few times on the land, driving up to one of the houses that's being built, which is plot 21, also going to plot 29, and look at the the foundation of that land being built up, and, and so on. So this shows you the most active energy, in, and you just see that our direction is building, because we have several people that's right now just organizing their building plans, putting things together, and then they're going to start building in the next few months. So. When we return to Ghana in December of 2021, 20, we'll be able to just show you a whole lot more as far as this people building. But you go back the year before this, we went on the land, not the year before this, but December 2020, we went on the land, and you'll see the videos of just the land being laid out. Then you go back a few months, you'll see the bull logo, those that's clearing it, and then you go back to the very beginning, of, which is uh, December 2019, when we started doing the videos on the land. You will see all of us, the chief and everyone that's a part of uh, the network. You'll see us walking the back way because we have a front and a back way. Uh, one is before the chief palace and one is after you pass the chief palace. So that gives you two unique access to get to the land. So when we took the back, um, it, took us, it took us about 15, 20 minutes to walk to the land. And so it goes to show you where we just start from, from ground zero and working our way up and putting the time and the work in as time go along and sharing everything with everyone, let everyone know that this is real, this is what we're working on. And also letting everyone know that you can you can participate and help us go faster and help us just build us faster. But at the same time too, we can't uh, sit around and wait for people and we can't fight with people. We just have to just, you know, we're on a divine mission and we have to keep on moving. So whether slow runners or non-believers, if they, you know, want to catch up and connect later, that's absolutely fine. I know it's not the easiest decision to make, but I know for some people, they want to see everything go up, and then they want to jump in. So at, at the entire period from the beginning to now, our goal is just to keep on adding new energy of people as we go along. Uh, so that's what we keep on uh, doing these uh, conference calls, let everyone know the updates of what we're doing. With. That way, if you feel like this is the right time for you to jump in, jump in. Only thing I'm going to say is as time goes along, the price of land increases. It was a whole lot less uh, two years when we started, and those who got in, they just got the best deals, but they also participate in basically building what we have together. So that's the only thing that you know, I have to say to anyone who just decides to just you know, make a move later than now. So yes, family, it is a lot of videos. Um, I'm looking at, it's uh, 82 videos. Uh, so that includes conference calls, the, the blood sacrifice and libation to commission the land, us being by the nearby beach, us being by uh, the orphanage uh, and school there in the town, uh, which is you know, which is another entity that we're, we're going to build beautiful relationships with because many of us have a lot that we can offer as far as just having a unique skill-based education system. And I'm, I'm all about this technology and, and, and business administration and this all different kind of this aspect of this uh, maintenance, which is this a culture that we all have to learn as uh, black people because whatever we built, 
we have to maintain it. Alright, perfect. I went through all of my web links. Let me just scroll on down. So for the most part, uh, the conference topics we've we're going through everything. We've gone through um, many of that information also. All right, so you see the 15 acre map, the 57 acre map, and then there's some of the details we went through um, while, while I was, did an overview instead of just going to uh, 1 to 10 on the topic list. And give you one of my favorite videos, which is just us leaving the restroom that was built by two of our community members in the town and us leaving from there, getting back on the bus and just driving uh, to the land and then just seeing the first house that's coming up that's right there in our view. All right, so family, I'll scroll all the way down to where it uh, shows a video of, um, with a background that's say MOF, with a gentleman in the white shirt that's um, a good uh, brother and business partner, uh, Dr. Milana. So I'm going to talk about this one last part and then we just open up for questions and that's dialogue. I know there's a lot of information to go to, but remember family, you can always go back and just read the fine details or finer details. Uh, this is a um, citizenship conference with the Ministry of the Future, Dr. Milana, May 26, uh, 2021. And also I did the first uh, one with him, and this was December 27th, uh, 2020. And the reason why I just set up and built this partnership, this is also someone I've known from 2006, um, before I even got to Ghana. Uh, he was one of the people from Ghana that found out that I was bringing a group of people and he wanted to talk with me and everything. And he's full of energy, just like at that point, and as dedicated to reconnecting his brothers and sisters to the ancestral land as ever before. So this specific uh, conference we have set up is uh, for those of our group members that's traveling with us you, or anyone in the country can come and sign up for MOF membership and if you come and sign up while you're there uh, we always got some incentives to offer as far as reduction of the membership cost. Uh, it's two, $250 and while we're there I don't know what the next adjustments will be uh, but that's one thing that we encourage and then while you're there, you can literally just fill out the application and turn it in to Dr. Milana. And that application basically gives you access to MOF organizing your citizenship application to push for you to be a citizen. And they're using all of their attorneys and all of their connections in government to process people through their network, uh, just to get right to the point. Along with that, they also just uh, offer certain uh, this connection. There's a business uh, center that's off Spintex. Uh, that uh, you can go and connect with them and so on. But the uh, other thing is uh, while you're there in Ghana and you're trying to looking to spend a few months there or longer, you're going to need to be a resident. So they'll help you with a residency which can take anywhere from 30 days to 60 days. Uh, so you'd have to be willing to be in a country that long. If not, then you have to go and come back. Then you explain that situation to them and they work certain things out. And any one of us that have us working on anything for you, citizenship, residency, and things like that, uh, the only thing that we want you to do is just communicate with us. Um, like, example, don't go up to immigration and, and complain about anything. Um, we, you know, everything has to be done diplomatically there in Ghana. I've seen more than a few people go up to immigration and frustrate themselves, and all it's going to do is just make our case for repatriation worse. Um, People want to understand that we're coming there and that we can respect the culture and understand that their country process of doing business is not as efficient as may, maybe where we're coming from with the, the technology and the computers and things like that. But they are trying to do the best that they can do to help us get things set up. So what, I, what I've always done since day one, 2006, I've always used my diplomatic connections there as far as even, even the tour guide to this, handle certain business until I can kind of flow with it on my own and things like that. So having representation is very important, and that's what my connection with MOF is. And while I'm helping people that are on the ground in Ghana need to work on this and certain other connections, I can always, um, you know, when it comes to just getting attorneys and getting certain things done, 
which you're going to need at times. At least we have a network of people that can provide those services. And it doesn't give you access to free, free attorneys or anything, but it does give you access to you know, consultation and it gives you access to just having to know that you, know, you have a group of people on your side. So the video is uh, very uh, interesting and important. And also at the same time, too, while we get our land and we begin to put the land uh, in your, your, your name and everything, we want to make sure that we can make sure that you're a resident, and then the ultimate thing is we want to make sure that you're citizens and you have the full access to entitlement of your land. I mean a whole bunch of legal stuff, uh, but the goal is to make sure that we flow with the law to where we, you know, when we build our business, we have all of our papers in order, and and that's what this whole connection is about because. You know, you meet people and then they want to just do a bunch of underhand stuff and, you know, it doesn't work. You know, number one, you're disrespecting the country as far as how they do business. And number two, you're putting yourself in a situation where, you know, it's their country. So you come there and violate any laws, they can deport you. That's like those of us that are not from America and you get caught up into certain things and, you know, you get deported back to your, your country of birth. And so I don't want those things to happen to anyone. So we're trying to... Even if you're not an MOF member and you just say, and you just want to even talk to myself, you know, I'll always do my best to just make sure we get you connected with good people and make sure that we give you the best advice. And that's always going to be based on all of our experience. I've um, been going back and forth for 15 years, but I have people that's been here for 20, 30, 40 years. And whether they're going back and forth or whether they have lived there consistently, those are people that I've connected with uh, in the sole purpose of us working together to help the rest of our people come, be settled, be organized, and not having to to just run back to America. Like I hear that, uh, you know, it's like that one of those war stories. And, you know, as soon as you run into certain hardship or certain things, it's like retreat. Um, but retreating it destroys the thing that, you know, because of your vision is living in Africa and us doing all these things. Hey, it's uh, something that's going to take a whole lot of work and everything. So strength in numbers and us organizing together uh, will solve that problem. And that's how I've been able to survive and make it there in Ghana and been able to just have no problems at all in the country. All right, and our school now some more is another company that we have, and it's um, it's more in the you – know, they do um, from, from construction to us have land access. So that's another one of our partners that uh, – for those who want to have prime real estate, meaning outside of where we are in the central region, uh, be more in-city, in-town, and be willing to pay the in-city, in-town price for land and things like that, uh, this is the company we're using. But we're also working with them to see if they can build certain kind of homes on our community. Uh, so I spent uh, about three weeks here in Ghana after the tour just meeting with all of these uh, people from this company, that company. Um, talking with Dr. Milan and his attorneys and just having lunch here, there, and and just trying to put the final spin on this to where we can just make sure people are comfortable and they're ready to go. You know, so I have one sister that's there right now since we have set all of this up, and so far everything is moving nice and smooth for us, smoother than other people in the past. And we you know we're able to just expedite getting our paperwork done so when she's ready to build, she can build, things like that. Uh, and honestly, family, this took a, a lot of work for us to get here. But that's what it takes, and I tell people this, you know, don't take any shortcuts. Just do the right thing and put the work in, and, you know, it, it will all work out. All right, so this last this document I have is just a land search of, um, this was actually the 50 acres, but we added a few more acres to it, so we had to just get it redone because we needed just a few more acres. And so, family, as I scroll down to the bottom, it's just showing our previous uh, tour groups uh, from 2006 to 2021. That's Ghana and other countries, but showing you our consistent connection in Ghana. And people ask why Ghana. You now, Ghana is the only country that's given us access to be a citizen without DNA and without going through a bunch of other dramas and things like that. And it also have a good amount of energy of us in the diaspora where, you know, you can have the aspect of this being around people that you're more familiar with and also being around people that you're, you know, you're trying to learn more of the culture with as local and native people. You know, for some of us that may make a difference, or some, you know, maybe a little more adventurous. Uh, but for me, all these things are strategy and Ghana is that, that country. 
So people always ask me, when the next time I'm going to Ghana? So you'll see the link for Ghana December coming up and Ghana May next year. I found you, I went through a whole lot, so what I'm going to do is this. Put everyone on the mute all mode, and then from there you can just press star six to unmute yourself. All right, Sam, we are in the mode. You can just unmute yourself now. All right, so remember, Sam, you have to press star six to unmute yourself. Uh, your name, where you're calling from, and your question. Hello. Uh, greetings. Hey, Brother Pomani. Thank you for everything that you're doing. Um, I have an unusual question. Yeah, can you please introduce yourself, uh, your name, where you're calling from, and your question? Um, uh, Mrs. Cooper from Florida. Hi, uh, greetings. Thank you. I have uh, two questions. Okay, the price and the dimensions of the lots in square footage. All right, perfect. Uh, let me just put up the reference, and I'll explain it to you right now that way I can make sure we got it up. Because I don't understand meters. Uh, it's not, it's, uh, it's 80 by 100, um, closer to 8,000 square foot. Oh, that's good. And then and what? the core cost of land is $3,000. Okay. Then we have a $500 administrative cost, $350 uh, for survey, and then $700 for registration of land. Uh, so once you have the getting started email, uh, family, as soon as you open it, it just shows. So it's basically another 1000 And 50 Okay, on top of three thousand. Uh, three thousand for the land and five hundred for the administrative cost. So the land and the administrative cost three thousand five hundred, and then the, the the extra things that you have to pay for is your three hundred fifty dollars for your land survey to get your markings of your land dimensions. To be okay. Able to, to your builder to help you build. Then um then the next thing is uh, seven hundred dollars for registration. So right now we're trying to get everyone to finish their survey and then we're going to close out on registration. And what about uh, infrastructure like roads and stuff? Uh, those things are things you have to talk to, talk about and we have to put our money together to develop it. I see. Okay. Now this is a unique question. I read an article about back in the 60s there was an earthquake. Is uh, this in a fault line area? Uh, it is uh, basically free of this, uh, those kind of natural disasters, tornadoes, hurricanes. Um, Have you ever looked into fault lines? Fault lines? Or hurricane, earthquakes? No, I've never looked into earthquakes. That's what we're talking about as far as the land right there? Yeah, is it in a fault line area? No, that's what I'm saying. It doesn't, it's not in a location where you have those issues of weather and things like that, uh, hurricanes and tornadoes and things like that. And that's also confirmed with um, the people that's uh, there in the community in town. But it's, a, it's something anyone can look up and see. There's nothing going on in Ghana as far as that. Okay. Thank you. Uh, absolutely. You're welcome. I finally just went uh, through about um, a whole lot of information. Uh, next person name, where you're calling from and your question. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, um, I was looking to see like how you raise your hand or something on this, but I guess you just unmute. So, okay. So, um, I had a quick question. Um, so, northern Ghana and southern Ghana are really drastically um, different, and it seems like most of what I've researched as far as investments and um, building is happening in southern Ghana. Um, are, are you or do you know anyone who's doing anything in northern Ghana? Because it's when, when I guess when um, they got their uh, independence, for some reason, I haven't researched that part yet, but I'm not sure why, but it seems like most of the wealth went to the south and the north, like, you know, Tamale and or Tamale, um, and the urban areas are really um, very impoverished. So, my question is: 
is is anyone doing any like is anyone going to go up north and try to do anything to help them or does everybody just want to stay south because it's you know it's really pretty and all that I wouldn't even know I have no knowledge of uh, what's happening in the northern region I've never been there myself either the closest north I've been is about halfway in the country um, in a city called Kintampo when we, went, when we last went to Kintampo waterfalls uh, mm -hmm. I'm trying to remember the year we went, uh, and that was a few years ago. I, uh, the entire continent and the entire Ghana is open for you know, business and investment. If someone wanted to build very large factories, that's the perfect location. You have the abundance of land in the northern region. The only difference is just the south is more tropical, so we're trying to build a nice tropical beach town also where we live at okay yeah because of the yeah the it's a nice clean beach all right so um okay so another question so cape coast is like where the like beach areas are um i saw on one video that you can buy you know beachfront property for like thirty five thousand. Um, are we are we building property that's comparable to that? Like so, it's it's really affordable. I know you you, you had mentioned the culture center. I think that you're going to open up to um, the indigenous, you know, people in the orphanage. You know, um, so is that what you're doing as well, or? Well, it's the community and business center. So the community and business center, the the, the community center will be kind of like your YMCA uh, in your in your neighborhood, and then the business center is a set up business place, and you're you have classrooms and you have people teaching, training, you have all kind of things going on. But it's for our residents, but um, we open up access to the town itself, and trying to just build a certain level of of energy to where we're connecting together. Now, as far as the prices of your home, if you get a lot and you want to build a nice $20,000 house, I'm all for it. Uh, we're all for it because we don't have any restrictions on what you can build. It just looks, only thing is, it just looks, have to look nice, neat, and clean, and organized as we look to build the entire town, not the entire town, the entire community as organized and clean cut as possible. Okay, but what about, what about the beachfront that you're talking about? Uh, the beachfront I'm talking about, I, I can't say much about the beachfront other than it's there, and um, the chief is always open to talk to any individual who's ready to write them and, and check to get any of that land. But as far as us doing things together as a group on the beach, it will take a little more connection for us to start doing that. Uh, but at the same time, too, I have mentioned it to the chief that we should all get together, meaning some of us and some of the many other people that live in the town, mm -hmm. and, you know, kind of talk about the idea of just making it a beach town, things like that. Uh, so, but beyond that, uh, as mentioned, if individuals wanted land at the beach and wanted to build a villa and things like that, um, that, that the number that you gave me at one point, uh, and I, know if, I don't know if it's still the same, is uh, $6,000 for plot. Uh, so, and that's something that I wouldn't be really involved in it. I would just be the attorney, or so, that person, and the chief and things like that, because uh, what we're dealing with is this: it's take uh, it has take up all of what we're doing, and we're trying to stay focused on getting certain parts of the 15 acres going, and then getting you know getting the, the next set of land uh, going as far as making sure the chief get his payments and things like that. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, absolutely, but uh, definitely uh, the, the future and the vision is to make something happen there. And finally, also note uh, there are certain things. We do have another uh, group uh, conversation we have. is more of a private group for all members. So a lot of things, there are certain things that we just leave, we just talk about in that group only. Uh, most of what I have to share with you is um, just all updates and the access to what we have access to. But as far as this, us like planning and and organizing to to do you know do certain projects um, and that is uh, for community members or people who just live with this connect with me and 
we just get them in the community. All right, so family, I guess everything sounds uh, clear. And uh, that's what I was saying at the beginning. If you just write some questions down, I'm going to go. I had another question myself. All right, sure, go ahead. I was just curious. When, when they say the chief is, is like an overseer for all this acres and acres of land, do the people see any of the money that we pay? Just the common people, do they get any of the money, or does the money go to the chief? The money goes to the chief and his family, and the chief and his family invest back in their own town and their own people. And that's why these things are always being developed and built. But and the people never see any of the money, though, the regular people. I didn't say that. I was, I was saying that the money goes to the chief and his family, and they use some of the money also as investment in their own town and community. I mean, they, I'm not going to say they just give money away like, like that. The ideal thing is uh, they're investing in the, whatever needs to be. Like, example, the school needs to be upgraded, things like that. Oh, I see get uniforms who don't have uniform and then they have a they have an orphanage there that they're always investing in. I so see. We also just became partners with them to just help the orphanage. And then the same thing when we build in opportunities, it's open for us to grow together as far as this if you know, if individuals are looking for employment or opportunity, whether it's partnership or opportunity, trying to keep everything as flexible as we can possibly uh, keep it. Okay, thank you. Absolutely, yeah, you're welcome. All right, so family, well, the main thing is that uh, if you do not have a getting started email and you need one, all you have to do is email me or text me and it will be sent to you. And then you fill out the thing that's needed to be filled out and uh, make a commitment to phase two and we'll just add you to the group. And you can just check things out. I'm going to step in to see if there's anything else I need to go through. My name is Alfred. Um, I'm calling from New Jersey. Uh, just had a greetings. Yeah, you know, I came into the I came into the call a little late, and I I read some of the text, and I noticed that um, uh, there's a difference between phase one and phase two. Um, you know, I'm sorry to have you repeat this if you talked about it already, but um, can you tell me um, the difference between phase one and phase two and um, the fact that there's no more plots available in phase one, which means what exactly? Does that mean that the house is already built or does it mean that everybody already um, has those, all those plots are gone and now you're starting new with this phase two? So you could just Absolutely. talk about that. I can explain it. And the first are 15 acres, um, which has uh, 50 residential plots. Uh, we, have, um, we have people who have committed to those plots and paid on it. Uh, so the only thing we can do for anyone who wants to be on standby in case someone changed their mind or, or something, or they decide that they may want to go to the phase two, uh, for those who fill out the paperwork and send me a request and say, add me to the standby list in case something is open, then you'll be the f I'll look on that list and if something comes open, I'll just call that person and I'll go down the line. Uh, we've had several people on that list over the last few months and they're all clear. So that's a, so all of the, those plots are gone. The next thing, and then the difference in phase, phase uh, one is that phase one is 100% paid for in full. We have a signed and documented lease uh, with our board members and the chief uh, uh, group. Uh, we have memorandum of understanding. We also have the, um, the sign and stamp survey, land search, and things like that, um, and the incor incorporation to, you know, to back up those documents and the business name. So that is all settled. The next thing is uh, phase two is we're making payments on it. It's the same as when we first started. We're, we collected payments and then we paid the chief his money and then was able to get access to the to the land to clear it and then once you paid them all finally was able to get the, the final legal documents so phase two is basically we're paying on that land but we do have the graph so that that survey is actually done so uh, individuals will be able to select the idea of the location where they want on the map based on 50 to 100 at this moment and that way we can this or 120. That way we can, when we, when we pay the chief enough money, it'll give us access to the you know maybe about 
15 to 20 acres and things like that. But we worked the deal for the whole land because we needed land for farming and uh, commercial uh, business area and things like that. Uh, so that's the only difference. So those who are committing to phase uh, two, you're making payments and we're using that payments to pay the chief. And then we get to a certain point within like six months, six to nine months, uh, we have enough people who have invested in, we'll just start getting the land clear and then let individuals know that you're going to start billing on your land. Uh, once we just get you the the land survey and also get you a deed of assignment, uh, which is a lot easier to get those paperwork now since we've been through the process. And those are the illegal paperwork for you to legally start building. And what is the difference in size for the phase one project and the phase two project? Uh, it's uh, 8,000 square foot. And it's um, 3,000, it's the same price, 3,500 administrative costs and the land costs. Okay. No, no, I, I'm asking as far as the overall um, size of the plots, because apparently phase one has 15 plots. Is it still 15 plots for phase two? No, phase, uh, phase one has 50 plots, five zero. It's 15 oh, acres, zero. and it to the total plots that have is 60. But the community center, business center, and the uh, security um, gate and office takes up the other 10. Now the 57 uh, acres, it is, let me look at the map I have here. Uh, we have it from number 51 to continue it all the way to 181. Uh, so those are all 80 by 100 uh, lots, which is closer to 8,000 square foot. Um, what you're going to get typically in Ghana now is um, 70 by 100, uh, closer to 7,000 square foot. Uh, so we have we have the, the beyond just the 130 plots that we have in phase uh, two. We have a whole lot of other space for commercial and business area to make it you know to complete what we're talking about a business town. But for now, we're just going to build a community center, business center, and security office as a front setup, and then work our way back. So is it fair to say that the phase two? may take a little longer for you guys to secure the leases um, and make make payments to satisfy um, the lease with the with the with the chief councils or something. Uh, yeah, so for those who want to build, they just have to be open to doing the same thing that all of us had to do, um, make payments and work the system little by little, and then you get access to start building uh, within six to nine months. And it's something that it's uh, it's a simple thing to work out with the chief. Even if after this, get ten acres clear, and then those, you know, those people who those twenty or thirty people who are ready to build, we just get it set up for them. So the main thing is um, just trying to get everybody to understand the overall of everything and understand that how we started and what we've gotten accomplished with the fifteen acres, and showing everybody all the documents, all those things, and let them know. That it's the same thing that we're going to do until we just handle, get all the 57 acres uh, paid for and done. So anyone who's open to this, the best thing to do is just start your paperwork. Uh, let's get you uh, connected and with this uh, or the payments. And within six months, based on how many people that we have, I can make I can make magic happen. And you know, it's it, because the chief is going on the strength of what we did in the first 15 acres. Uh, we took about six months to pay him all of his money and then paid everybody, the attorneys, all the people that we paid uh, based on the cost of the money that we put in for the land and the administrative costs, which also is how the attorney and the consultant is paid. So it's a system that we put together. I can't say that everyone else do this and America does something different. But um, that's um, our game plan to work with. So anyone who want to have a private conversation with me on getting started and we go to certain things. I'm also available for that. But uh, let me know if that sounds good. Okay. That's pretty quick. Well, that's because we had a lot of pre-commitments because we are building a group already for a while. And there's just people that we know and most okay. of the people have traveled me and everything. So right now we're trying to get another set of people to do the same.
I guess Alfred, I guess I uh, answered all your, your, your questions. All right, so family, um, what we just talked about, let me know if um, everyone, if that makes sense, if it's clear to everyone. We're working a process like we did from the beginning with the 15 acres. So I just want to basically just get a list of people who want to build within the next within the next six to nine months. Uh, so you can also just email me and let me know because that's how I'll be able to just work what we have uh, based on the relationship we have with the chief and, th and then we have the survey that understand the flow of the land because he's the one that I've uh, been laying it out and you know once you do these things you get better and it's nothing for myself and the attorney to draft up deeds and get the chief and the right people to sign it and things like that. All right, so family, uh, the line is open for questions. All right, and that's star six to unmute yourself. All you have to do is just unmute and uh, introduce yourself. Uh, family, uh, got a lot of people on the call. Uh, no one have any questions. If you don't, it's all good. Just uh, read through the information that you have, which is the new letter, and then request a getting started email and anything else that you may need. And then you can just take time and look through it. Hello, good morning. Uh I have another question. Uh, sure, go ahead. Uh, this is Alfred Tucson again from uh, New Jersey. Um, how long has your organization had a relationship with uh, this particular chief in a particular area? And you indicated that you're looking for people who's start building within six months. Is that like a deadline? Does it have to be completed in six months? Or um, or is there like a, a general fl flexible time frame um, for us to at least start building, but not necessarily complete? Uh, remember, we can't do nothing until we uh, pay for, for, the, for the land. So if we have 10 people who paid all their money, we can use that to pay for some of the land and give them direct first access to start building if they want to start building, but maybe five people want to build and five don't, but I don't want to stop the five who want to build uh, for, for, for any reason. But uh, what it is, uh, once you acquire the land, you have up to five years to build a livable house on there or something livable, and that's from phase one to phase two, but that's when you initially get the uh, land. And then as far as the chief, I've known him for over two years. and. Uh, Beyond that, I um, have other people who have known them longer. And uh, the consultant is, what's, um, which is who I've known since 2007. And so he is a direct representation to handle the business uh, with the chief, which um, he's from the same coach and can speak certain language and translate. And then the attorney is there uh, as our representation that we hired and paid to do all of the correct legal stuff. So, you know, those are the flow of what uh, we've done to get this start going. And then once you establish those relationships, you just keep building them, keep building them, and you look for flaws, and you look for issues, and you look for things that don't look right. Last, I went to check the chief. I went to see him with another one of my brothers, and we just sat down, talk, did a nice little recording, and then you know, connected with all of his staff and uh, folks, and we made our way around the town and things like that. So it's um, it's a whole bunch of uh, legwork and also this building national relationships and things like that before we start making these uh, deals and things. And all the techniques and all these things is based on just being there, going back and forth for 15 years and having business conferences and having people who work at the um, the Lands Commission, you know, basically come to our conference and educate us about all this process. And that's why I was going through everything at the beginning. That's why I have the uh, new vetter the way I have it with uh, certain uh, details, uh, with certain documents and things like that, and same on the website. Thank you, Bumani. Absolutely. All right, so family, the line is open. If anyone have any questions, and anybody just needs to just talk directly with me, like they literally just look into build and they looking for some land or they're looking to go to Ghana and they want to make sure that you know they have things set up and in, in order. So I would just say just text me and call me and then I can uh, just connect with you and we just uh, go through it. Um, make myself available so we can just 
get the right people to connect with us for us to do this uh, because it takes strength in numbers to, to make this thing work in Ghana and, and anywhere else. And what we're doing is making sure that we don't do the same thing that we've done in America, which is not properly put our cooperative economics together as a people. And what I mean by that, um, I have so many friends who live in like some wonderful neighborhoods, and it's neighborhoods either either they're all black neighborhoods or majority black. But then when you look at everything else that's outside the neighborhood and in the town, we own little to none of it. Uh, so that's basically what we're saying between ourselves and this community, our other folks in other communities that are primarily this communities full of Ghanaians and, and things like that. This would be probably the only community that I have. It's a mix of a lot of people from different parts of the world and things like that. Our goal is to just literally just connect with everybody else and we just talk about it. Like we just work together and say, hey, this is the town we're going to build and it's owned by us as a people. And the benefit goes to our children, making sure our children have access to what they need access to. And for me, it's competing with uh, the likes of the Arabs and the Asians and the Europeans and not just trying to join them, but competing with them industrial-wise, compete with them, you know, technology business, just, you know, competing and just doing what we're supposed to do to where we have black ownership and black establishments in place versus us having to always import everything and depend on others for us to send our natural resources to, and they produce it for us. So all of those are things that, you know, when a group of people come together, they can accomplish and do. Sometimes I know it's not as simple in America to do, and you know, based on the history of just our people just being sabotaged uh, when they organize and put things together, uh, whether it's 100 years ago or whether it's uh, a few days ago. Yeah. And that could be tricky, whether it's uh, the folks with the building permit making sure that you don't get past the building permit stage. You know, it, it could be all kind of foolishness that goes on if you're trying to build a uh, black power establishment. Uh, that's why you see some people just do things different ways. But um, I can't accept that. I'm not trying to go in business with a bunch of other people. It's, you know, only people I'm looking to go in business with is our people. And that town has to be a beach town. It has to be a town for us as a people. Uh, or, you know, the local or the average family want to go on vacation and want to get away, that's their home to get away without having to occur a bunch of big bills or making it feel like, you know, they're not welcome because it's like just a group of fancy rich people. I have a question. All right, greetings. Uh, name, where are you calling from? My name, My name is Susan. I'm calling from North Carolina. All right, greetings, uh, greetings, Susan. Good to hear from you. Yeah, I, you may have um, said this already. Um, I was a little late. But in order to build the roads and for the community center and other um, projects that will be going on in the neighborhood, will there be like a HOA fee or will this just be like a coming together to just get each project done as we need? It's a little bit of both. Uh, HOC uh, originally was uh, thirty dollars. We've been, it's been reorganizing our group since uh, some of our members decided to go in a different direction. We have a lot of new people, so trying to just um, get to the point where we just just talk about it and work that out. But right now, we're just looking to. It's sixty-five of us, and we're just looking to just add a few more people and get the group stabilized to where we have. The first 50 plots are surveyed, and you know, which which is a commitment from the people that's in the group that they wouldn't to go that far, so they're committed. I mean, just try to make some decisions because they're the ones that's going to be ready to start building and things like that. Uh, so, as uh, the different projects, it's a combination of just trying to get your best minds to find the best ways to finance project and look for investors, and everything has to be more self-sufficient than anything else. Uh, but uh, the ultimate thing, which we have done from the beginning, and I've done from even starting the business I've, I've started, is just putting our money together little by little and growing it, and then recycling profits and reinvesting it back into an operation. Uh, mm -hmm. Not as simple as it sounds, but uh, that's one form of corporate economics that I've worked from the beginning. But uh, we, since we're doing heavy development, we're going to have to open up our minds to additional, including creating a nonprofit and having a group of people work that aspect and find out how to do unique things. 
and so on, which we don't really have those things set up. But is this really just open to to see who wants to you know step their game up and say, hey, let's we can do this to get this done and be accountable for it and do the legwork. Okay. Thank you. Absolutely. And also, Susan, if you just want me to send you the getting started information, just you know, send me a message or an email and I'll get it to you. It has applications and all of the, uh, the, the actual paperwork literally in one email. Okay. So, you know, you can just download the whole, you know, the whole file as far as the attachments and that will be all of the information also. Oh, okay, great. I think I missed that part. And I may, um, I, well, I'll send you a separate message because I may try and go with you in December so I can take a look. That's perfect. Uh, that sounds, sounds good. I can, we can definitely work that out. Uh, and, and yeah, so definitely let's uh, okay. talk about I'll shoot you an email. That's perfect. All right, family, I don't have much to go over beyond just answering questions and giving certain details. So if no one else has any questions, uh, we're going to close in the next uh, few minutes. All right, so family, all you have to do is press star six to unmute yourself. Hello? Hey, Green Dutch, I can hear you now. All right, all right. How's everything? All right, cool, wonderful. Give us a close out. So family, this is uh, uh, Vice President Chaz. Our Charles White, and um, just want him to share some energy from our group and the things that uh, we've organized. Um, want him to share it from his perspective, and then also once he's finished, uh, he's open to answering questions um, about what we do before we all close out. So, Chad, yeah. introduce yourself and uh, just you know, share what you want to share uh, with the rest of the people. Okay. Yeah. Good evening, family. Glad to meet you all. Um, yeah, it's, it's important we understand that we are a community. We're working together. Hello, can you all still hear me? I saw some kind of a message came come across my computer. Hopefully you can still hear me. I can hear loud and clear. You're good. All right, good. Okay. Yeah, it's important we understand we are we are community. And this is this is a, a very, very different thing that you probably entered into. Uh, in my estimation, what I'm looking at, with what Brother Romani has done is, has been... Uh, um, um, monumentous and and really in many ways he has he, he has really uh, um he moved beyond where Garvey was for the for, for the same amount of time um most of us are not even face-to-face -face people you know where, where we know each other some of us do know each other like that face-to-face -face, a lot of us are not this is pretty big for us to uh, enter into something where we are virtually via telephone or uh, or via computer technology or whatever are meeting each other. Uh, it is very important that you all try to be and communicate with each other and other members, because that way you can get that. Bomani uh, had mentioned early, early in the meeting. Uh, th this way you can you can become acquainted with each other, see how you can work together. Um, oftentimes, when you are meeting different people, you're becoming acquainted with. You can find certain things that you have in common, and with with that can begin, can begin different conversations. You can figure out how you can solve problems together. We're basically a problem-solving community. That's what we're based on. So um, this is why we are this is why we are being self-sustainable. If you think about it, years from now, your great-grandchildren will, yeah, my my auntie, or my uncle, my mom, my great-grandmother, great-granddad helped to do this. You know, okay. So this is a big step we're doing. So, you know, this is a lot of a, a lot, lot of doing it yourself that we're working with. Um, we have different committee teams that have, uh, uh, since since the inception of this organization have been put together to have uh, done some research on various items. We appreciate whatever other things that you can add to the research. Um, also, I might add too, I am very approachable. Mr. Uh, Brother Romani is also very approachable. Uh, it doesn't take much for you to go ahead and uh, um, and shoot us an email or WhatsApp us or give us a telephone call. Uh, I'm I'm especially open to it. So I mean, if you if this is something you just want to uh, wrap about, something that's been on your mind, it could be a car or any event. It doesn't necessarily have to be something we're building with, with, with where I'm coming with, 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 with where I'm concerned. Because I believe that there's something called 
social infrastructure, uh, how we get along with each other. It's important that we are able to get along well with each other because if we can't love each other, how are we going to love the people that's already there, you know, the people that have been there for generations or the people that are coming in there. So this is a good practice, and as it stands, we've got upwards of 60 members, which means you have upwards of 60 different personalities. Try and get used to some of those personalities. Some people are more people person where they've gotten out and they can get with people and all that. And I'm not saying you have to be in people's specific business on every little item or whatever. Uh, but I'm saying that uh, by get, getting uh, by being accustomed to talking with with each other, and especially talking about pertinent uh, issues um, that are relevant to what we're doing, um, in terms of how to solve different problems, gives you good practice. All right, we got some we got some serious work to be to to, to be done here. This is uh, big stuff to wrap your head around, and, and it's always new stuff we're going to learn. None of us knows at all. But together we're going to know more. So that's basically my, you know, you know, my appeal to you. Um, I believe that every individual is basically a a, um, a library, uh, if, if not a museum and a library. Everybody's got something special they can bring to this party. Um, of all the people that's on this planet, the folk that we like to call our folk are especially successful and able to put together a party. Well, let's operate with this party and make it and, and, and make this party do something that's real, you know, so, so something that's very significant. Um, I see this as bigger than just our community, and for that matter, just as Africa, or, or, or even bigger than just, just just Africa. This is this is big enough to affect the whole planet. If we do this thing right, it will have a ripple effect because we are actually raising the grassroots people to do something that is significant. And that's all I can think of. Are there any questions? Yes, Chaz. Um, appreciate the energy. And one of the things I want you to share is I want to share that um, you're in the Sustainable Living um, a Committee. Oh, yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm part of the uh, Sustainable uh, Utilities Committee. Exactly. Uh, the key word. Sustainable Energy and Utility Utilities and, and, and in some unofficial way, even sustainable so, social infrastructure. So, yeah, um, what we've been doing um, is that we've done some of the research with regard to how we would acquire uh, water. Um, and, of course, those, those, those conversations, and we're talking off-grid here because we want to be independent. We want to do it ourselves. Um, so uh, some of those conversations that went from everything from water, borehole to water collection, uh, using uh, uh, and most most recently using the cisterns, which looks very viable to me. Um, so a lot of that stuff is right there on our page. If you go over to, to the WhatsApp page, if you go over to the section where it says document media links, you should see uh, quite a bit of the things there. Um, also for solar energy. Uh, we've had those discussions whether to go off grid or on grid, and of course, off grid is the way. And there's, quite a, there's, there's some information I think that is still on that page on the on the on our main WhatsApp page. If it is not there, contact me, and I will I will share that information with you. Uh, it may be required that you send me an email so I can send you whatever we have that makes it real easy, and that way you can reference it. Um, the uh, um, for the solar energy. Um, there is a, a explanation about off grid versus on grid, so that you so that you can understand what the differences are. Because I'm sure for many of you, this is something very new for you. Uh, furthermore, um, furthermore, another thing that we have um, uh, within that is uh, how to calculate your your energy needs. And one of the things I tell the members: if you go to your light bill or your electric bill, and you look at what the kilowatt hours usage is per month, they give you some idea of what you'd be used, you know, in terms of what you'd be using when you're over there. Of course, it, it, of course, it's going to change a bit because, um, first of all, you're exposed to sunlight um, more hours of the day. Um, in in a, a well, put it like this here, because you're at the equator, you're exposed to sunlight for a longer period of time than you are in wherever you're currently living, unless you live right near the equator right now. Um, so 
the, the calculation tables are there for that. Um, there's also some videos with regard to um, both the, both water needs and solar needs. And of course, uh, if you want to add anything to that, you can, you know, hey, let us know what, what you found out because the technology is always changing. Uh, there are some things I have on uh, at the sustainable energy section of the WhatsApp that is like um, uh, uh, stuff that's being speculated upon right now or has been speculated upon. Some of it, some of they've, they've, they've even uh, um, uh, um, they've, they've even started using. Uh, it may not be common knowledge, but they've started using it. So it stimulates that. Another thing I'd like to tell the members too, part of the sustainability is your intellectual sustainability. If you don't know something, you do have access to the internet. Okay? Back in the, before there was internet, there were libraries to operate with, and I imagine some of those are still open for, for the general public. But you can always, you can always inform yourself uh, by, you know, by taking, by being proactive in your own in your own personal education by looking up different things and thinking about them and having discussions. It's the critical discussions and critical thinking that can actually lead to our critical action, our mature actions in terms of what we're doing. Are there any questions? Uh, excellent, excellent. All right, thank you. This is, this is Arlita from um, California. I just have a really quick question. Um, so I, I was looking at the video for um, the uh, Ministry of the Future and um, their grant opening of the Culture Center. And um, one of the speakers was from the construction company. I think it's your, Joida or something like that? Yeah, Jodai. Jodai, yeah. So um, he was showing some pretty amazing looking homes. Are are those the types are those the types of homes that you're building or not uh, those are not the type of homes that we're building on our physical community. Uh, but Jodai is another partner of mine. Uh, if someone wanted land in like Isagon and they wanted to pay fifty thousand dollars for the land, and wanted to, and wanted Jodai to put together a two hundred thousand dollar house, then those would be the people that I would work it out with uh, with them and the attorneys, and and then they'll be able to just do all your stuff, everything for you. And they're not off the grid; they're connected to the grid. So more than likely, they'll have um, uh, city water, city. Um, power and with backup systems um, that's how they build it so it's a little what we're building is just from the ground up and everything as sustainable as possible but people can still build big homes on the property itself but the only difference is just that we're more in a I would just say a country era but it's not really country era it's more I would just say tropical paradise because it's right there by the beach and everything is just so plush and green but, but that's uh, but I'm trying to get uh, Joe Dye to work with us on homes that's going to cost because the homes that we're always projecting to people is always like forty to sixty thousand dollars. When you see any videos on like YouTube in Ghana and things like that, you know you always have people um, talking about two hundred thousand dollar houses and things like that. That's not like our vision. I think the only reason that they talk about the houses that price is because the land is so expensive now around Accra, especially when they get into some of these prime neighborhoods. Like Issa gone. The house that you're gonna get is the house that you want to get. Some people may have a tiny house that's like twenty-five thousand dollars. Only thing I tell everyone, since we don't have a code of of the homes that everyone can have, because the last project I worked, um, the whole group was destroyed based on the fact that they told the entire group that they only have one option to build their house after we gave them all the money and things like that for the land, and that became a bunch of drama. Uh, but we're trying to be a little more flexible. So if you want to build anything that you want to build, if you want to build something real big, we'd have to just make sure that you have two lots. Uh, but beyond that, um, what you're going to typically have is a one-floor, three-bedroom, two-bathroom, or a two-floor, four-bedroom, uh, three-bathroom on the property. And that's based on the feedback I've gotten from the group. 
but I'm also encouraging people to build like two bedroom, one bathroom, something simpler, if, especially if it's just them by themselves. And then anyone wants to expand and you have the yard space, you can just always expand. Okay, that sounds good. Thank you. Absolutely, yeah, you're welcome. Oh, Brother Bamani, that's one more thing I want to add, I add as well. Um, All right. Uh, yeah, for, um, as the members join, uh, I'll be sending out various WhatsApp uh, requests from you. Uh, one of them will be asking about your ideas, your interests, your abilities, your talents, um, because of the fact that that way I get a chance to know you better. I get a chance to understand what you're capable of or what you're willing to do. Um, that's important. So, you know, look for that to happen. And also understand something. We're, we're, go, we're going there to, 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 to share what we have in terms of our expertise, in terms of our learning, but also to learn very much because there's a lot of stuff we just don't know, okay? There's a lot of stuff that, that, that we, we may have a, uh, an inkling of, of knowing that could be cleared up just by, just by communicating just with regular people. And I'm not saying that those people over there know it all. The people over here don't know it all either, but put our minds together, we can know a whole bunch more. So that's something that's why I just wanted to make sure we share. To me, it doesn't make any sense to go there and, and my ignorance increases because I'm not trying to learn anything. It's important that we learn something and that we figure out ways that we can contribute to, to, our, to our own community and to the communities, the other communities around us. And I guess that's about all I had to say. Thank you, Brother Bomani. Absolutely, Brother. I have a question. Hello? I don't. Uh, yes, I can hear you loud and clear if you can uh, introduce yourself, your name, where you're calling from, and your question. Hi, this is Saket, and I'm calling from North Carolina. Um, uh, if I'm interested, yes, hi. In you know, purchasing the land now, let's say it's something I do in 2021, 2022, but I'm not ready to move until 2023. Um, and I think that I hear you say you have up to five years to develop the land or to build a house. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, let me just explain this real quick. So you have five years. Once you get to the point where you just, where we just clearly can see that you're not going to do anything on the land, all we'll do is just show you the map and say, hey, these are some of the other options where it's not as critical to build now and you can take a little bit more time. Because what we're doing is just building from the front all the way up. It's like same thing as phase one. We vax people if they are not looking to build soon in the next uh, next few years, and they want to just move to later phase and things like that. So it's set up for flexibility versus having to deal with some people who set these things up. They say, well, if you don't build by then, well, the land is going to go back to the chief and things like that. It's a bunch of this foolishness people just come up with, but that's the purpose of building a group to where we can have all the flexibility where you can build a house you want to build, you can move around as you need, uh, we just we build it based on the leverage that we need because it's already hard already um, making that move to Africa and living your dreams and getting things set up. So everything we've done is just based on this, you know, the pain and suffering that uh, us and other people have been through, um, and and that's why we all got together and just created this group group and put our money together in this lockdown and the first uh, 15 acres and just say hey um, we're gonna make it easier for everybody to come from this from so on. So you have, you have the flexibility that you need. Okay, that's great. I'm going to try to make the tour, but it wouldn't be something that I would move until after 2023 when I'm ready to live there full time. Perfect. The goal is to just get everyone to work on a payment system by even paying a deposit, and, and then everything is just going to where, because ultimately we're going to need to get access to the land and keep on getting access to more for that as we keep on going. The way we've been able to do it is just with uh, deposits and payments. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Perfect. And it may take even up to one year. It depends on how many people commit. So I um, just want to keep everybody in that mind. And then you have all the time you want also family. Um, if you ever show up in Ghana and you need to see the land, uh, more than likely I won't be there. But um, we have everybody else there, so it's just a matter of me communicating with the uh, surveyor, the consultant, the chief, or uh, 
the chief community leader or a secretary or just one of our members that's on the ground, and then uh, we'll get you escorted uh, once you get into the town, and then we'll just show you the land, and then you can just talk to those who are building on the land. And beyond that, what I have is three tours that I've done there with footage of the land from the ground up. And anyway, family, I'm going to close. Um, everyone, appreciate uh, your time and energy. I'm going to just click on uh, open mode so everybody can hear. All right, so family, good night. Appreciate you joining us for our Black Star Pan-African community public meeting. And uh, go to edit the conference call and share it. Get it out to you, and you can share it with others. Family, everybody, good night. You take care. Enjoy, and we'll keep you posted on the next time we'll have another conference call. Thank you, Brother Bermani. All right, appreciate you. Take care. Have a good night. All right, good night. Thank you, Pam, for attending. Have a good night for you. Brother Bermani, thank you, of course. Yes, Brother Chaz, keep it strong. Yes, sir, got to. Strong to last long. <laughs>